So my uh, junior year of high school, it was supposed to be the best year for my uh, athletic career. It wasn't a very long career, but my junior year was going to be the best of it. Uh, for starters, I was, uh, I was playing men's volleyball. It was the first year our school had had a men's volleyball team. It was a 10-game season, and we were 8-0. and uh, We ended up the, the season undefeated, but at the time we were 8-0, and and it was exciting, right? Our very first year, we had, uh, it was just really awesome. We, we uh, defied all expectations. It was also my junior year that I was going to play JV basketball, and the plan was that I, I had worked really hard so that I could be a starter on JV and get some playing time on the varsity team, and my goal was that by my senior year, I would have uh, put in enough work that I could be a starter on the varsity. I was so excited for that. It was also going to be the year that I got my driver's license. It was going to be a year of many firsts, and I was so excited. But one day, it was uh, towards the end of our volleyball season, beginning of our basketball season. We were running some drills in practice, and I felt my ankle twist. And when it twisted, I heard a pop. And I had broken a bone on my foot. It was this bone right here. I don't, I don't know medical terms, but whatever that bone is, that's what I broke. And as I was falling, uh, I, three thoughts went through my mind. Like I heard the pop, I'm falling backwards, and I had three thoughts. One was, my foot is broken. I can't play anymore. Two was, I don't get to finish the perfect volleyball season. And three was, I don't get to play basketball, which means I might not make varsity next year. It took me about a second to fall on the ground, but I had those three thoughts rush through my mind. See, when that, when that, I heard my ankle pop, when I knew, when my, my bone popped, when I knew it had broken, it, something broke inside of me. I knew that the way I had planned my life, that the way, uh, the plans I had made, the, the goals I had set for myself, I knew that I would no longer be able to achieve them because of that broken foot. When I heard that pop, it was like my life had just popped itself. It was like everything I had planned was no longer there. I share that because on March 13th, when Governor Edwards placed our state under a public health emergency, I relived that pop. It was like this bubble in my life had burst. All the plans I had, all the, the goals I had set, I was on track to meet all of them, and all of a sudden, everything fell apart. Mid-City Church didn't get to launch like we had worked for and planned. Uh, my mom was supposed to come visit, and that didn't, it might not get to happen. We, at our main campus, had, we're going to open our uh, sanctuary for the first time, and that didn't happen. I mean, I can go on and on and on and on of the things that kind of burst, that popped that day on March 13th, when we realized we're not going to get to do what we were planning to do. Something had broken Things were different, and we had to get used to a new way of doing life. And the question I asked myself was, how do I get through this? How do I get through this? So I'll tell you, the first thing I did was I cried. I mourned. I, took, I gave myself about a week to say I need to not plan anything. I need to not do anything. I just needed to be uh, still and mourn, of what, mourn what had just happened. But I'll tell you the second thing I did. The second thing was to get busy. I started doing a whole bunch of stuff, stuff that had nothing to do with my work. I started doing stuff I didn't like to do. Our yard looks amazing, and I won't take all that credit. We had a student come and do a whole bunch of work, but I started helping out with the yard. And my wife sees it. She's giving me the finger right now, pointing me <laughs> at me. <laughs> but I, I, like, I was out there. That's a big step. I don't do yard work. I, I don't like yard work. But like I started getting myself really busy because I, in my mind, if I get busy, I will distract myself from what's actually happening. I was hoping that in my busyness, I wouldn't have to face the reality of what was before me. As I think about that, I'm reminded of a scripture in the Gospel of Luke. And this scripture has really been um, heavy on my heart. I want to read this to you. It's from Luke chapter 10. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. 
But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is no need, there is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. I love this story because the reality is I'm Martha. I find ways to get busy, to do things that seem unimportant, to just do things that are going to distract me from what is right in front of me. And I will tell you that after March 13th, when we realized the situation we were in as a city and as a country, I decided I'm going to get busy And I didn't understand people that didn't get busy alongside me. I didn't understand people who were just like, okay, I wanted to get busy. And I felt like everybody needed to get busy because if we all got busy, then surely this whole thing would go away. Maybe that's you. Maybe you've been keeping yourself busy. Maybe it's not doing yard work. Maybe it's not doing handiwork at home. Maybe it's not even doing stuff for work. But maybe you've just been busy doing stuff. Maybe you've been busy watching Netflix or Disney+. Plus. Maybe you've been busy trying to uh, organize your bookshelves or your kitchen, doing laundry a little more than usual, sleeping in a little later, staying up a little later. Maybe you've been busy because you think that in the busyness, you will distract yourself from everything going on. You wanna know one of the reasons I keep myself busy? You see, I carry this big weight on my shoulders of things that I feel like I have to do in order to be effective, in order to be good, in order to to do uh, life the way it's supposed to be. I have this huge burden on my shoulders of stuff I'm supposed to do. And so I make myself busy because every time I can check something off the list, I expect that load to get lighter. And I tell myself that if I can check enough things off my list, maybe I will stop feeling that weight on my shoulders. Do you want to know how that's working out for me? It's not. No matter how many checkbox I check, the weight is still heavy. The weight of the church launching eventually, the weight of uh, am I a good husband now that my wife has to spend 24 hours a day with me? Am I uh, a a good uh, coworker? Am I like all these questions begin to uh, give this heavy burden to my shoulders? And so I distract myself with busyness, hoping that every time I check something off, the heaviness will go away, but it doesn't. So what do we do about it? Look, I'll tell you right now, I'm preaching to myself as much as I'm preaching to you because I need to hear this word tonight. I know you're expecting the typical pastor answer. Give your life to Jesus, right? Notice that Jesus is there. Just, just let go of the busyness and, and focus on Jesus. And all those things are true. But I want to be honest with you for a second. I'm going to confess to you for a second. This last week, I have been very diligent about my spiritual practices. I have been praying. I have been reading my Bible. I have been listening to music and playing music, and I have been reading, and I have been very diligent about being present in Jesus' presence. But I still feel that heaviness, and I still feel that weight. You see, what I've realized as I've been preparing for this message, what I've realized is that I had turned those practices into busyness. I would get up and I would pray, check. I would get up and I would light my candle, check. I would read my Bible, check. I was doing my spiritual practices as a form of busyness to lighten the load. See, here's the thing about noticing Jesus' presence in our lives. It's not a checklist that we just go by. It's an intentional practice of saying, God, I'm going to sit here with you, and I'm not letting go. It's about saying, God, I know all the things I have to get done, all the things I need to do, all the things that I need to take care of, all the Zoom meetings I have to be on. God, I know all those things, but I'm choosing to push all that aside and just be here with you. See, what's been missing in my life and maybe what's been missing in your life is a willingness to say, I know what I need to get done. But for right now, Jesus, I just want to be in your presence. 
Maybe it's about saying, God, I know all the things I have to do. I I know the things I have to check. I know that this needs to happen and that has to happen. But for right now, Jesus, this is about you and me. I don't know how heavy the weight on your shoulders is tonight. For some of you, you've had to let employees go. Some of you have had to cut employees' hours. Some of you are those employees who have been let go or your hours have been cut. Some of you have kids at home and you're worried about their education. Some of you have had to become uh, masters of your craft while also becoming teachers. Some of you are scared for your health. All of us are carrying this weight on our backs, this heavy load. And here's my, 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 uh, what I'm, what I'm going to challenge you with. The busyness will not take it away. But maybe in the busyness of life, we can find a moment to just sit still, to push everything aside and say, Jesus, nothing gets my attention but you today. You see, when Jesus responds to Martha, Jesus doesn't judge her for worrying or being distracted. He simply says, Martha, you have two choices. You can stay focused on the worry and the distractions or you can come and be present in my presence. Martha is me. Martha is you. And we're being asked by Jesus, which are you going to pick? The busyness and the distractions, the worry, the fear? Or are we going to spend some time being present in God's presence? And so here's what I want to do. That's my challenge for you today. And I have a prayer that I wrote. And I'm going to invite you to uh, recite this prayer with me. I'll say a little line at a time. I'll, I'll say the word, and then I'm going to invite you to repeat back after me. And after that prayer, uh, Jason is going to lead us into another song of worship. I pray that if you're wrestling and struggling with this tonight, if you have a big weight on your shoulders that you're trying to get rid of and nothing seems to work, I'm going to invite you to say this prayer with me tonight. And maybe for these next 10 to 15 seconds, maybe if that's all you can give today, be fully present in the presence of Jesus. For these next couple of seconds, I want you to not think about work. Don't think about what's happening outside or with your families or anything. For the next couple moments, just focus on you and Jesus. Will you say this prayer with me? Gracious and loving God, You know my every worry and my every distraction. You know how heavy my burden is. God, help me to realize that you are inviting me to let go of this weight I carry. So God, whether it's little by little, or all at once. Help me be present in your presence. In your name I pray, amen.